The Injustice Universe, in both the video game and the comic books, it could be argued that this is the darkest timeline. What we see in universes where Superman has decided to take charge of Earth and brought down the heroes that stood against him, all of those events usually happen off-panel. This is the first time that we actually see Superman's rise to power, and the metahuman civil war that takes place is probably one of the bloodiest that DC Comics has ever shown. Very rarely does anyone die off-panel. No, no, no! We get to see their deaths and all of the bone-snapping and blood-dripping details details. Not just second tier heroes either, we're talking some big names here. Below is a list of every death so far in the Injustice universe. If I miss one, please don't kill me, there is an excessive number of deaths in this series. Also keep in mind, this includes the original comic series, the first game, the second comic series, and the second game. At the time of recording this, we have not seen the annual yet, so maybe more people die. Steve Trevor. And just as isn't the darkest timeline because of Superman, Wonder Woman is also pretty savage. Even for a somewhat savage character. In the Injustice universe, Steve Trevor is actually a spy for the Nazis, because why not? And when he appears on the Amazon island, he tries to steal the lasso of truth. So Wonder Woman catches him and cuts off his head. Jimmy Olsen. While not the biggest death in the Injustice universe, it's still pretty tragic since Jimmy has always been a supporting member of the Superman family. I mean, he even had a comic called Superman's Pal. While once again following Lois, on a hot tip, the two are ambushed by the Joker and Harley Quinn. Jimmy catches a round through the camera lens and straight into his eye. The guy went out the way he lived, following Lois Lane into danger like an idiot. Scarecrow. While searching for the Joker, who had just killed Jimmy and kidnapped Lois, Flash goes super fast, searching all of Metropolis for her heartbeat. When he finds the body of the Scarecrow, he brings Batman in to help him investigate. Much to their confusion, it's obvious that Scarecrow has been killed by Joker gas. Or has he? It's never stated that Scarecrow is actually dead, although that is what we're led to believe. He does, however, appear in Injustice 2, so I'll let you decide if this death counts or not. Lois Lane, the death that really was the moment when everything went to hell in the Injustice universe. Lois's death pushes Superman over the line that for so long he refused to cross. The worst part is that, through the joys of Scarecrow's fear gas, Lois actually died by Superman's hands, all while he saw one of his greatest enemies. Her death also triggers a bomb that vaporizes Metropolis killing all of the citizens, putting those deaths on his conscience as well. The Joker. Now, let's be honest, he had this coming. After all of the graveyards that he's filled, all of the times that Batman should have put him down, it took tricking Superman into killing his wife and unborn child for someone to finally stop him for good. Superman punching through your chest probably isn't the most painless way to go either. Jesse Quick. Look, a lot of people died in injustice, some not even named. Jesse Quick was introduced in 1992 as a Flash supporting character, and since then she's been on the Titans and the Justice Society. She's not the biggest character character, but it's still kind of crappy that she is the unnamed speedster who gets Lex to safety in Metropolis, then tries to save others before being vaporized. Kid Flash, caught in the nuclear bomb in Metropolis, we don't even get to see him. Beast Boy, while Kid Flash is running through Metropolis, Beast Boy and Superboy are flying above it. When the bomb goes off, Superboy does his best to shield his friend, but it doesn't work, and we are left with the image of Connor holding the body of Beast Boy. Steel, John Henry Irons is another character that has had a long career in comics that was taken out in Injustice. During the Metropolis explosion, he's working in his lab, and he manages to protect all of his research, reaching out to his niece to let her know about it, and then be crushed by the building collapsing on him. Nightwing. This one sucks. Superman decided that Arkham isn't safe and decides to take all of the prisoners to his own prison. Batman can't allow this, even though Superman is right. I mean, people break out of Arkham all the time. And then Batman and Nightwing show up to stop it. A big fight ensues on both sides, and in the middle of it, Robin, the current Damian Wayne version, throws his weapon at Nightwing, knocking him out. Nightwing falls, snapping his neck on a piece of stone. This brings the fight to an end, and both sides decide on a temporary truce. Kalibak. During one of Superman's press conferences, he tells the people of Earth that they better get along, or else. Kalibak, son of Darkseid, shows up, and unfortunately, Kalibak didn't get the or else memo. Superman quickly puts down his parademons and punches Kalibak unconscious. Old Superman would have left it at that, and Kalibak would have returned to Apocalypse to fight another day, but this new Superman? Kalibak tries to fight, and in the end, Superman puts him in the ground. Captain Adam. The president at this time is at enough and decides it's time to send in the big guns. Captain Adam. Sent to the North Pole, Adam has orders to bring Superman down one way or another. The two begin to fight and Adam brings Superman to his knees, but before he can finish things, Wonder Woman arrives and using her magical sword, cuts Adam's throat, spilling radiation everywhere. Knowing that he's about to explode, Adam grabs Superman, flying into space where he can safely detonate. Wonder Woman tries to stop him, but the explosion throws her back to Earth where she's knocked into a coma and Superman continues to survive. 
Green Arrow. So this is it, the point of no return. I mean, sure, Superman's gone off the deep end, but it was only a couple of supervillains. Others have done worse, but not with this. Realizing that they need an edge in hopes to take down Superman and his allies, Lex Luthor, who's a good guy in this universe, informs Batman that Superman is making a pill that will give regular people Superman levels of strength. Green Arrow is sent in to break into the Fortress of Solitude and steal it. When he gets there, he's greeted by the Kents, who Clark has brought there for safety. When the Big Blue shows up, Green Arrow has no choice but to try and fight. When an arrow is deflected into Pa Kent, Superman snaps and he beats Oliver to death right in front of his parents. Definitely the point of no return. Kyle Rayner. After being off planet during the events of year one, Kyle returns to check up on the place. But he's stopped by Sinestro, who wishes to go to Earth himself and doesn't want Kyle involved. In a move that seems kind of simple and makes you wonder why it's never been done before, Sinestro simply removes Kyle's ring finger, suffocating him in the vacuum of space. And then he rips all of his limbs off, because why not? Chip. That's right, Marvel. You may have a raccoon, but DC has a space squirrel. When the Green Lantern sent in a squad to see what the hell was going on on Earth, Chip is imperative because he has the ability to stop Superman's brain from firing. To stop this and endear himself to the Man of Steel, Sinestro shoots Chip through the head and no one sees a problem with this. Despero. To convince Team Superman that he is on their side, Sinestro knocks Despero to Earth and fights him to show the heroes that he has turned over a new leaf. Using his ring, Sinestro forces Despero to try and strangle him. While Hal Jordan and Jon Stewart show up, Sinestro snaps Despero's neck and tells him that he had no choice, and they just believe him, regardless of everything in their past telling them that they shouldn't. You know what? I think the major difference in the Injustice universe is, I think just some of the heroes are dumber than their main universe counterparts. Commissioner Gordon. While confirmed, we never actually see James Gordon's death. After learning that he has cancer, Gordon decides to lead an assault on the Hall of Justice and the Justice League satellite in order to keep his daughter and Batman's location safe. Taking the super pills, Gordon and a group of former GPD officers attack the League. While on the satellite, Gordon manages to take down Cyborg before the end, but our last glimpse of him is while he looks down on Earth, he says goodbye to his daughter. How did he die? Was it his cancer? The super pills also gave cancer strength to his body? I like to think that Superman pulled his arms off. John Stewart. Big CGI fight. On one side, Batman's resistance with the aid of the Green Lantern Corps. On the other side, Superman's regime with the Sinestro Corps. In the middle is Jon Stewart, who has followed Superman but doesn't want to fight his fellow Lanterns. When Sinestro seems to be trying to help him choose what to do, he literally stabs him in the back, piercing straight through his chest. Guy Gardner. Guy Gardner's a bit of an ass. No one's going to argue with that. But after Jon's death, Sinestro lies to Hal, informing him that Guy killed Jon by accident. An enraged Hal finds Guy and begins to beat the hell out of him. And in the end, Hal rips off Guy's arm, letting him fall to his death, all while Sinestro cheers him on. Ganthet, leading the big what would be a great CGI fight in a movie, is an Owen, Ganthet, who has more than enough strength to take on Superman. Also, he brought along Mogo, the living planet. While the fight is going their way, Superman is given a yellow lantern ring when its previous wielder is killed. Now enraged and charged by a power ring, Superman beats back the Owen and throws him into the living planet, pushing them both into the sun. So I guess it should be Ganthet and Mogo? Dr. Occult and Rose Psychic. I had to look these two up. Dr. Occult and Rose Psychic are the same aspects of the same person who cannot live without the other side. Keep that in mind. Knowing that Superman is weak towards magic, Batman enlists the aid of several of DC's more mystical talents. He tasks Occult and Rose with taking out Raven. Unfortunately, the duo isn't up to the task and Occult is burned alive by Raven's Hellfire. With him dead, Rose is separated from his body. Working alongside everyone's favorite street magician, John Constantine, the two manage to defeat Raven. Before she dies, Rose uses a magical powder to keep Wonder Woman in her coma. Go team. Jason Blood and Harvey Bullock. Using Jason Blood's house as a way to magically keep them off the grid, the resistance begins to plan a way to take down the regime. When the house is attacked by a strange powerful force, the former GCPD detective Harvey Bullock is the first to try and hold the door. Jason Blood steps in to help him out, and they both are destroyed by the vast energy of the Spectre, who's aiding Superman. Our last image is Harvey's body being obliterated. Ragman. What do you do with an almighty being that can beat you in a fight? You steal his soul and place it into someone else's magical rags, which is where it'll stay until he atones for his sins. After Batman enlists his aid, John Constantine shows up with a plan to capture Superman's soul. Unfortunately, because it's Superman, the spell takes a little bit longer. This is all the time that they needed for Shazam to find them and save Superman. Out of nowhere, the Spectre arrives again, killing Ragman. 
All the while, Constantine watches, unable to help. Dead Man. This whole segment should be called Spectre Wipes Out the Magic Users of the DCU. Catchy, I know. After taking the body of Shazam in order to smack some sense into Spectre, Dead Man's soul is wounded by the spirit of vengeance. As he dies the second time? I'm not too much up on my DCU spirituality. Dead Man passes his powers on to none other than the soul of Dick Grayson, making him the new Dead Man. Phantom Stranger. Another magic user tries to talk some sense into Spectre, who isn't quite acting like himself, because it's really Mixelpidolic. Not having any of it, Spectre then basically punches Phantom Stranger through a planet. Clarion the Witch Boy. Okay, so they're all not big names. Clarion the Witch Boy is a magical bad guy who I remember mostly from an episode of the New Adventures of the Batman animated series. And in Justice, he was working on the side of Batman's resistance, but before he could really help, he was shot and killed by Sinestro mid-battle. Kind of sucks for the Witch Boy. Detective Chimp, the world's greatest monkey detective. I love this guy. For Injustice, Detective Chimp was actually summoned by Clarion. So when the Witch Boy died, the Chimp ceased to exist. For more of this lovable guy, check out Justice League Dark. That video should be out soon. Huntress. And the big final fight of year three, everyone's duking it out. Batman, Batwoman are super pilled up, don't do drugs, kids, and they put the beat down on Superman. Wonder Woman shows up and puts a stop to it, though, and then wraps her lasso around Huntress's neck and with a little tug, breaks it. Renee Montoya. With the death of Huntress, Montoya takes it hard and drinks very heavily. In the end, she pops like a couple hundred super pills and goes to take down the Man of Steel. While she holds her own, her heart eventually gives up from all the pills that she took and she dies. Seriously, don't do drugs, kids. The weird part is Montoya didn't have a relationship with Huntress. She did have a relationship with Batwoman, who doesn't really talk about her death after this. Probably a writing snafu, maybe? I don't know. It's it's kind of confusing. Hercules. All right, enough of this crap. It's time for the old gods to step down and put an end to Superman's crazy ideas. Hercules leads the charge, defeating Hal Jordan, fighting both Superman and Wonder Woman, and it takes the magical power of Shazam to bring down the demigod. But Shazam is really just a kid, and he can't bring himself to murder anyone. Luckily, Superman doesn't have that issue, and he puts Hercules down. Artemis. In the final battle with the gods of old, Hera, queen of the gods, is decided to kill Wonder Woman's mother. Artemis jumps in the path to save her queen, getting herself vaporized. Kilowog! In an annual, Plastic Man decides to break into Justice League's underwater prison in order to break out his own son. While there, he's aided by Kilowog, who has been a prisoner since the whole Lantern War thing a few years ago. While the League responds, Plastic Man reveals that he has all of the Lantern's rings and he passes them out. Before Kilowog can get his ring and become a threat, Sinestro shoots him. Parasite! After the prison break that resulted from Plastic Man trying to rescue his son, there was a fair number of supervillains wandering around yet again. While Superman is fighting a newly arrived Doomsday, Hal and Cyborg have their hands full with Parasite, and it's not going well. Eventually, Superman gets some help from Bane, who apparently can handle Doomsday in the Injustice universe. That's that's a weird twist. And he takes Parasite and throws him into the sun, which is a thing that Superman does now. The Rogues. Batman needs allies. So much so that he'll turn to villains to help him out. Harley Quinn is a perfect example, and so are the rogues. At the same time, Lex Luthor is trying to complete his clone of Superman so they'll have a heavy hitter. Unfortunately, Bizarro thinks that he's the real Superman, and what does Superman does? Well, he stops supervillains. Guess who are supervillains? The rogues! Do you see where this is going? Anyway, Bizarro goes after the rogues, and in a battle, he decides that he'll vaporize Heatwave and Weather Wizard with his heat vision. Sucks to be them, I guess. Jason Bard and a whole group of innocent people. To be honest, I had to look this guy up. Apparently, Jason Bard was a Gotham City detective who first appeared in 1969 and has been a supporting character ever since. Who knew? In Injustice, Bard starts an anti-regime movement called the Joker Underground. Superman shows up to the rally and is not too happy about this, burning them all alive with his heat vision. We're basically at full-on supervillain mode, so that's kind of where we go from here. More of the rogues! So after roasting Heatwave and Weather Wizard, Trickster managed to convince Bizarro that they were friends, and the two flew off to live happily ever after. And kind of like a mice and men kind of thing, Trickster is trying to teach Bizarro how to act around people, like covering his mouth when you sneeze. While Bizarro learns quick and while flying, covers his mouth while he sneezes, dropping Trickster, who falls to his death. If that doesn't kind of make you laugh, I don't know what will. Bizarro! In the Injustice universe, Lex Luthor is friends with Superman, but actually working with Batman to take down his regime. To do this, Lex created Bizarro, who now comes to him with the body of his former friend Trickster, hoping that he can fix him. Not wanting Superman to discover that Lex actually is the one who created Bizarro, he tricks the two of them into fighting in the Fortress of Solitude against Doomsday, who Lex now controls as the ultimate weapon. In the moment, Lex has the power to actually kill Superman, but in a moment of remembering their friendship, decides to kill Bizarro instead, which really doesn't make much sense, but who am I to judge? Alfred Pennyworth. Superman steps over the line here, from supervillain to just plain asshole. While Alfred refuses to give Batman's whereabouts to the Man of Steel, who then proceeds to insult him, Superman does the only thing that he can, and he releases Zaz to hunt him down and murder him. What? Soups, you want to rule the world to make a better play? Sure, we've all been there, but come on! In what way does this seem like a good idea? King Shark. 
Former Flash girlfriend and current Rebellion member Iris West is caught by the regime goons King Shark and Girder. The Flash, who is a member of the regime, shows up as Iris is about to be killed by King Shark. Using his super speed, Flash throws a broom so fast that it impales King Shark, killing him. Iris, of course, is horrified by these actions. Hawkman, after discovering that Hawk Girl has been helping out Super Jerk, Hawkman decides to work with Batman. He acquires some kryptonite and makes it into a badass kryptonite mace with a plus one to beating Superman's face in. After the League shows up and takes the mace away from Hawkman, Super Jerk offers him a one-on-one -on -one fight. That doesn't end well for Hawkman. Mr. Zaz, after Alfred's death, it isn't surprising when Damien sneaks into Zaz's cell and kills him after a long night of torture. I don't always agree with Damien's actions, but no one messes with Pennyworth. Metamorpho. Deathstroke is hired by Batman and Lex to steal the blueprints to the Mother Bucks. Being the best, he slips in without any real trouble, and he finally runs into Metamorpho, who gives him a real fight. Or maybe Deathstroke's just playing with him. It's hard to say. Anyway, during the fight, Deathstroke fires a remotely controlled drone into Metamorpho's head, which detonates, killing him. Deathstroke is almost immediately stopped by Raven and Cyborg, who apparently are just a few seconds late to the party. Batwoman. Batwoman wasn't upset about Renee Montoya's death, and they are even married in this reality, which has nothing to do with her death. It's just weird, and I wanted to mention it again. Anyway, while the Resistance is trying to open up a portal to another world in order to get different versions of the Justice League, Batman is distracting Superman. Once Super Jerk figures out he tries to stop them first step heat vision batwoman it doesn't stop the portal but it does lower the number of people who are possible for the game roster rest of the rogues golden glider is executed by wonder woman at some point before injustice 2 which is the reason given as to why captain cole joins the fight but we don't see it it is mentioned in the game in case you missed it lex luther shown in the story mode and comic tie-in lex finally comes forward against super jerk using his power armor to try and put an end to the regime unfortunately it doesn't work and super jerk snaps his neck for the world to see shazam also seen in the story mode, Super Jerk goes off his rocker again, questioning why the people of Earth are standing against him. When he decides that he should destroy Gotham and Metropolis, because that'll bring people to his side, Shazam finally uses the wisdom of Solomon and says no. Super Jerk then goes with the old faithful heat vision through the brain method, and another hero is down. Some of the Suicide Squad. So Amanda Waller is putting together a suicide squad and kidnaps Harley Quinn because she's popular and in a movie. And that's when a gun-toting Batman with red eyes, <laughs> Jason Todd, we find out later, shows up wanting his own suicide squad. Batman, <laughs> Jason Todd, kills both Waller and Rick Flagg. But there's more, because let's be honest, not every supervillain is really that useful on the Suicide Squad. So Batman, I'm not gonna do the coughing thing again. It's just Jason Todd. It's just, it's all it is. Bat Jason Todd pretended to be Batman. He head explodes Clot King, Killer Moth, Magpie, and Polka Dot Man. The only one to survive is Calendar Man, and only because his bomb was a dud, just like him. Dan Turpin. If you don't know who Dan Turpin is, go watch the Superman animated series episode where he stands up against Darkseid. The guy is the best. In the Injustice universe, Dan is picked up by Batman to run his prison where all of the regime members are being incarcerated. When Talia comes to break out Damien, we're introduced to the other person that I can't ever pronounce her name possibly, but it's Batman's daughter, Athanasia Al Ghul, Damien's sister. Uh, uh, that, she doesn't die again, we're never mentioning her again. Turpin discovers the jailbreak and her tries to alert Batman, but for his efforts, he's shot in the head. Still badass, though. Blue Beetle. Throughout the comics, Booster Gold and Blue Beetle were always friends. That's why this one hits you right in the feels. While training with the new Blue Beetle, the one with the alien bug thing, the original Blue Beetle, Ted Kord, is visited by his time-traveling friend, Booster Gold. Booster tells him that he doesn't have much time, and nothing he has done has been able to stop it. Ted takes it in stride and dons his costume one last time. And as he fades out, Booster tells him, I'll be there in the end. Ted stands no chance against the Suicide Squad, and he's captured and tortured. As he lies there dying, Booster shimmers in from the time stream like he promised. Booster comforts his friend as Ted slips away from this world, promising to take care of the new Blue Beetle. Now, if you'll excuse me, there's a little dust in the air and I have something in my eye. Diablo. As is the norm, Ra's al Ghul is trying to save the world by killing off most of it. It worked for Thanos. Batman takes a group of heroes into Ra's secret lair to try and stop him. Jaime Reyes, the new Blue Beetle, steps in and messes the whole thing up, and it turns into what would be a big CGI fight. Going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Diablo, Blue Beetle kind of overdoes it with the energy blast and causes Diablo to explode. The resulting explosion wipes out all of the endangered species that Ra's was trying to save for his new world. Nobody tell PETA. Red Robin. At some point, Superman locked the surviving Teen Titans away in the Phantom Zone. Remember, some died in Metropolis. The rest of them was in an annual and they got locked away when they tried to save Connor. Anyway, now that he's behind bars, Batman leads a team to the Fortress of Solitude in order to free them. Once freed, Tim Drake runs over to reunite with Batman, but then he's quickly heat-visioned through the heart by General Zod, who just escaped. That's two Robins down in the Injustice universe. It's never good to be a Robin, but it is definitely worse in this universe. Zod, 
Batman is not happy about what just happened, and he uses kryptonite fear gas to weaken Zod so that he can be stopped, which is great because it leads to one of my favorite Batman lines of all time, which I will now quote for you. I could never use it on Clark, not after what it made him do. But you, you killed one of my boys. You should be afraid of me because I'm going to F you up. Isn't that awesome? Using powered armor, Batman slaps Zod around for a little while, but it is Batman and he does have one basic rule. Roz, knowing that Batman wouldn't finish the job, sends the android Amazo in to finish things by literally snapping Zod's neck off. And you thought the Man of Steel was dark. Professor Ivo, the android Amazo was created by Professor Ivo to be the ultimate weapon. After Roz kidnapped his family, Ivo used Amazo to help save the the world by killing off a bunch of it. As Batman and his team try to stop the unstoppable android, members of Roz's team also decide that Roz has gone too far and Amazo needs to be stopped. Seeking out the mad scientist, they convince him to finally shut down the android. But Damien's sister shows up and due to the disobedience against Roz, shoots Ivo in the head. Amazo, did you know the Supergirl was around because only a few people were aware of her in the Injustice universe? After Ivo's death, nothing can seem to stop Amazo. Until Damien calls in the big guns. Clashing with Amazo on the moon, Supergirl manages to defend Defeat the android with a little help from Blue Beetle. Not wanting the world to know about her, she lets Beetle take the credit and slips back into the shadows. Animal Man. After betraying Roz and trying to stop Amazo, Damien, Jason, Animal Man, and Vixen are being hunted by the Suicide Squad. Most get away, but Animal Man does not. He is quickly ensnared by Poison Ivy and shot by Deadshot. A bunch of Green Lanterns. Tomar Ray, who's the one with a fin and beak, is murdered by the Red Lantern Cat who is already more interesting than the Finn Beak Green Lantern. Vandor and Badge are also killed by Red Lanterns that are actually Starro Red Lanterns, which is an interesting idea. Sinestro. After the fall of the regime, both Hal Jordan and Sinestro are placed into a prison run by the Green Lanterns. With Sinestro's only daughter acting as Warden, awkward, the Red Lanterns attack. Sinestro then jumps into action by acquiring a Green Lantern ring and defending the prison. After saving Hal's life, he then gives his own life to save his daughter. But as he dies, the ring leaves his finger and his last images are of his daughter's face. Vion, random, unimportant Red Lantern who picks a fight with Brainiac's minions getting punched through the head. Booster Gold. After Booster Gold sacrifices himself in order to defeat Starro, he's floating in space next to the big starfish waiting for death. In that moment, a younger Ted Cord appears, reaching out, taking the hand of his friend. Through some weird time travel mumbo jumbo, a younger Ted has figured out how things are going to end for his friend. And just like Booster was there for him, he's there for him. Damn this dusty room. Look away. Man Bat. After Gorilla Grodd slips into Gorilla City with domination in his mind, he steals the detonators for the Suicide Squad. While the Suicide Squad has been working against their will, do they ever get to work for their own will? They always have a bomb in their neck. They do try to protect their boss when Grodd attacks. While he does use his psychic powers to stop Deadshot from shooting him, Grodd apparently doesn't feel the same urge to do that for Man Bat, quickly pressing the button, proving that he has the device to kill them all, blowing up Man Bat's head. Solovar. Grodd has returned, slipping into Gorilla City quietly and controlling the minds of Solovar's young son. After making his presence known and stealing the detonator for the Suicide Squad, Grodd then stands before Solovar. Realizing that he is defeated, Solovar asks Grodd to spare his son. Grodd promises, and using his powers, orders Deadshot to shoot Solovar in the head. Ra's al Ghul. Ra's has been a Thord in Batman's side for decades, almost remaking the world more times than you can count, and died and resurrected more times than anyone should be. For Grodd's final act of taking over Gorilla City, a place where Ra's has been working with Solovar to enact his plan on the world, Grodd forces Ra's to kneel before him. Very easily, Rod then takes Ra's's head and simply pops it in his hand. As the Lazarus Pit reform popped heads, has anyone tried that? Alfred Pennyworth. Murdered by Zaz and then resurrected by Damien in the Lazarus Pit, Alfred never truly came back. Not really. The man that raised Bruce and his various sidekicks, considered them all family, wasn't whole anymore. In the end, he decided to step away, reaching out to his friends and asking them to look after his son. Then he left, because Alfred really did die, and the man who came back was a shell of the man that he used to be. How much dust in this room? Gorilla Grot. Secretly working for Brainiac, you get to watch Aquaman put a trident in Grodd's gut in the Injustice 2 campaign. Good times! Dr. Fate, also appearing in the Injustice 2 campaign, Dr. Fate arrives to fight Superman and Batman towards the end of the game. Apparently, the Lords of Order have sided with Brainiac, who can bring order to the universe. Superman disagrees, crushing the helmet. And good lord, was that a lot of people dying. Now, depending on how you look at your, your endings, you potentially could get more people, but that's where we're going to leave it for now. We haven't done the Injustice 2 annual that's still supposed to come out, but this video is already massively long for an Injustice this death video. I hope you guys enjoyed and don't forget to subscribe to this channel to get more stuff on Injustice as we get it as it comes out because this world is not over guys. We're gonna have to do another updated one eventually. I hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you next time. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I will be right here with more information on comic books for you later.